Good morning ladies and gentlemen, our fans, customers, friends on Facebook, um, the entire Isuzu community. Welcome to this very special program where we are talking to uh, Isuzu East Africa and we are joined by the managing director who is going to shortly introduce herself and today we are talking about a key milestone that Isuzu has achieved. A hundred thousand vehicles manufactured in this plant. Please note that we'll be taking your questions. If you have any questions, you can put them online and we will endeavor to answer them as we go on. So, Karibu Sana, Rita, uh, please look at the camera and introduce yourself and tell us your name and what you do for Isuzu. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Rita Kavashe. I am the Managing Director of Isuzu East Africa and we are very glad to host you this morning through this Facebook platform. Karibu Nisana. Excellent. Now, Rita, um, we, we, we are known as Isuzu East Africa, but there are people who still call us GM. Uh, and people say, Nashukia GM, Nishukisha GM. Uh, <laughs> tell us why we are not GM anymore and we are Isuzu. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Jindu Motors uh, has been around uh, for 40 years uh, since uh, they started the plant way back in 1977. And you'll agree with me, that's a long time uh, for, for an organization to be present in a country and therefore had built a very strong uh, corporate uh, identity. So it's not very easy to forget. Uh, but having said that, uh, we changed uh, our name uh, in uh, July 31st, uh, 2017. We had a seamless transition uh, from General Motors to Isuzu East Africa. And we were privileged actually uh, on uh, January uh, 2018, uh, we had the launch of Isuzu East, East Africa, and actually that event was, um, um, we had our chief guest, uh, Chairman uh, Susumo Hosoi of Isuzu Motors Limited to launch our name as Isuzu East Africa, and, and we were very proud. It was a very, very uh, important moment uh, for us to go through uh, that process. When Isuzu came uh, into uh, East Africa uh, as a shareholder uh, with controlling shares of 57.7%, uh, uh, they had a vision because we were already very strong uh, with Isuzu uh, brand and it was a natural fit for Isuzu to come into the market. And uh, Isuzu promised uh, several key uh, important uh, development uh, platform uh, to continue to grow their business in, in, in the region. One of them was manufacturing. Uh, Isuzu is strong with manufacturing, uh, strengthening after sales support, uh, and also improving communication uh, between, uh, between Kenya and the other Isuzu affiliates. We have our facilities in, uh, in Dubai, uh, and Isuzu is a global company, so we draw a lot of experience and expertise and best practices from some of the Isuzu operations globally. So it was great. So manufacturing, um, after sales, and uh, great coordination and communication were some of the key things that Isuzu brought to, to us. Excellent. Um, um, Rita, you've been the face of Isuzu for quite a bit of time now. Um, how have you seen the evolution, you know, the people, technology, uh, you know, and, and how long have you been here? <laughs> Maybe we can start with that one. Oh, well, uh, I have a uh, total 25 years uh, working in, in, in different areas, mainly in the sales and marketing space. Uh, I became a managing director, first uh, local, uh, first female, uh, in the year 2011. And it, it's been a wonderful time for me to, to, to work and, and, and to grow the business. When I took over, our share uh, of the market was 20, about 23%. Uh, percent. Uh, today, we are proud by closure of uh, 2020, we were already at uh, 45%. So we kind of doubled our share, um, our share through the years. And, and I'm, I'm very proud that we have been able to achieve that working with our team. I have a fantastic team. Uh, we have great suppliers who continue to feed our assembly plant with great local products. Uh, we have our shareholders. Our shareholders have a long-term view of this business 
uh, and because of that they have uh, been able to uh, invest uh, in our business especially uh, in the area of uh, production capacity so that we continue to offer global uh, safe and high quality products uh, to our customers so really it's been a wonderful journey who owns Isuzu uh, East Africa maybe you can uh, you know let our viewers know <laughs> <laughs> who are the owners yeah. so as I've said Isuzu is, is, is a local company so we we, we own it uh, but in terms of shareholding, a uh, 57.7 percent is Isuzu Motors Limited of Japan. 20.0 percent is ICDC. We all know yeah, ICDC local is a local outfit. Outfit. And 17.8 uh, percent is owned by uh, Centum Investment Company. Uh, we know we all know Centum as a local company, and we have about 4.5 percent that is owned by Itochu Corporation. And Itochu Corporation. Is, is, is a strategic partner in terms of um, uh, it's a Japanese company they, they help us with financing of our CKD material and they help us also in terms of shipping of our products from different locations uh, to bring them to Kenya for purposes of production. Excellent. So now key milestone 100,000 vehicles uh, in July this year we celebrated as the head of the team that achieved that, how do you, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel great. I feel really, really great because um, uh, being the leader to me, it, it, it achieving this great milestone is a moment of reflection. Uh, reflection on our resilience as a company. I uh, remember when uh, uh, we attained independence and the government of Kenya invited investors to invest in the company. They wanted to, one, get uh, manufacturing going, uh, and secondly, they wanted to deepen Kenya's uh, uh, organization and, and partnerships economically. That's why we have the ICDC, the Centum Local Investors, investing in the company. That was to deepen uh, our, our economy. Uh, in manufacturing, in local partners taking up uh, in these big opportunities and in technology transfer. We had moments of difficulties in, in the 80s and in the 90s when the policies were not for pro-manufacturing. So uh, many companies closed shop. We know many global companies decided to quit. But I'm glad that we stayed. Uh, shows our resilience and our desire to really support the government in, in deepening manufacturing. So at that front, we, we were very happy uh, that we stayed on because we're beginning to reap uh, the benefits of manufacturing as the big four agenda of President Kenya to continue to, to be a reality. And secondly, it's our people, the, 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 how we have grown. Uh, we have grown, individuals have grown. Uh, s uh, suppliers have grown from humble suppliers to large corporations, from small SM SMEs to big. But to me, uh, the most take home in, in this milestone is what we have been able to work with our customers to transform their business. I, I remember uh, one occasion where uh, a customer walked into a facility and they only had about 240,000 uh, shillings and they wanted to purchase a bus. They were scared even to come in here thinking we were bigger than them and yet they were actually, uh, the customer was bigger than us. I remember uh, taking that customer to, to the bank and sitting with the bank manager. I could see the vision of this customer and his potential to scale up and be a big customer. And uh, uh, I remember s uh, telling the bank manager, if this customer is not going to be able to pay for this vehicle, we will pay for it. So just give him uh, the, the load. And believe you me, that customer has moved from one bus and formed bigger companies with other partners. And today they boast of over 200 uh, buses in the market. And we have outstanding great examples of how we have worked with our customers to transition their businesses from humble, simple to large organizations. So to us, those are important moments. For my employees, uh, I, I, I see employees who, who came in young uh, and they have grown. They are leaders in their own right in their respective functions. So 
we derive a lot of great pleasure in, in this in this milestone because it has been able to touch us as employees our shareholders have enjoyed a fair return we have contributed to society so this is a celebration not only of ourselves but of all our key partners and stakeholders wow that's that's a beautiful <coughs> beautiful story um, Coming into the case for local assembly, because we have <coughs> the import versus local assembly, um, um, what, what is the case for, for using locally made vehicles as opposed to importing? Usioka, uh, having achieved this milestone, this country is still a second-hand vehicle market. 85% of what is sold in Kenya is second-hand. 60 billion shillings is used annually in Kenya to transfer jobs to other destinations, putting pressure on our Kenya shilling. Only about 15% of what is sold is new, and maybe about 55% now of that new is uh, locally assembled. So there's still a big opportunity to grow our local production and uh, there are great incentives that are on the offing uh, one of them being the uh, automotive policy that is promoting uh, the production of local assembly there is the move by Kenya Build Kenya COVID has shown us that uh, we need to improve our own supply chain to be able uh, to support us in, in, in hours of need so there's, there's really a, a lot that is happening in that front as far as local assembly is, is concerned, the, the policy is, is, is allowing. Uh, all the players have since reintroduced uh, uh, production of the pickup trucks uh, in Kenya. Isuzu is one of them and all the other competitors are already coming in. About 13 billion shillings is used annually on local content purchases in Kenya. So there is a lot of opportunity to grow local assembly in the country. Let's talk about the local uh, content bit of it, mm -hmm. um, and and I think it's important for our people to know that uh, you have a huge number of people behind Isuzu East Africa that mm -hmm. are supplying with the parts that go into uh, the vehicles that we are assembling. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for Isuzu uh, itself, um, we have remained true to our initial cause. Uh, technological transfer. So that has remained at the core of our business. Uh, we can boast as being one of the only companies that is progressive as far as developing local content supply base is concerned. So for uh, we have about total about 400 local suppliers that are supplying us with uh, one item or the other. But for the purpose of the production line, we have about 30 uh, local content uh, suppliers who are supplying us with the uh, materials like springs, uh, wiring harnesses, uh, upholstery, uh, batteries, and, and all that type of product. So about 30 of them, creating about 10,000 jobs uh, indirectly. So good, good crop uh, of, of local suppliers who are also scaling up because as the uh, economy grows and as manufacturing begins to deepen, we see new uh, entrants coming in. Uh, uh, guys who used to, d to develop and supply things like radiator and glass are having a comeback. So looks like exhaust pipes and all that are coming back, uh, meaning that this this new uh, new optimism around uh, manufacturing in Kenya, and we can see it. Uh, we see new local uh, uh, manufacturing companies coming in, wanting to assemble locally. Uh, so there's, there's quite progress, but as far as Isuz is concerned, local supply development is at the core of our success and b uh, in business. Excellent. So if somebody wants to be a supplier of Isuzu, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what do they need to know? So uh, having said that running an assembly plant is complex business uh, because you have to be efficient. Uh, to produce one vehicle, you need to have all the components that go into producing that vehicle available at the production line when they are required. Right. 
Uh, so our team of uh, engineers and uh, procurement are always looking out for those uh, suppliers who can support our production. And uh, there are three key components that we mainly look at over and above, of course, capital. You have to have the right capital to be able to supply uh, our operation uh, is, is quality. The supplier must be able to demonstrate high quality because our products are of high quality. So the components that go into our product our production must be of high quality. Cost is, is a very important aspect of it. Uh, uh, cost or the cost because you're competing against many competitors and we want to take the product to the customer at an affordable price. So cost is very important. Uh, so we have quality, we have cost and of course delivery. Ability to be able to deliver real time when all these other materials are coming from all over across the, wo the world, the local content suppliers material must also be coming to the line, ready to produce the vehicle and ship it out to the customer. So quality is very important, cost is very important, and as well as the uh, delivery, ability to deliver, and then the requisite capital to be able to invest in people, processes, and system to be able to support our line. Excellent. Now, um, coming back to product, um, I, we are number one, of course, in the in the market. Mm -hmm. um, what are, what's your best performing um, vehicle, and why do you think it is? <laughs> our, our our vehicles are all best performing. Uh, so our our core is commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we have from a w a one ton pickup all the way to about thirty ton truck, with different customer segments. So when you look at construction. Uh, for instance, we have our uh, FSR and FVZ. I mean, they are beasts of burden. They hold the sand from the most difficult terrain of our country to the construction site. So when a serious investor in, in real estate will for sure own an FTR, formerly FSR, or an FVZ uh, truck. But then we have the schools, you know, the Isuzu school bus. You went to school, right? Yes, yes, yes. Which bus did you use? Suzu, of course. Suzu, of course. <laughs> yeah. So uh, interesting. So there's the school, the institutional, we the Suzu bus, about ninety percent share of that market. Uh, so best performing. Uh, before COVID, we were top. Now with COVID, a, a few challenges here because of the seating arrangement and learning from home that has affected that segment significantly. But in the last one year. Our best performing model uh, is the a FTR90, uh, formerly used to, we call it F FRR, uh, because that uh, product is, is, is used in, in construction, carrying of cement, carrying of steel, and you can see that our country has, we've had a boom, whether at the county level or at the national level, as far as real estate and construction is, is concerned from farm to, to market, uh, they hold the onion, the vegetables, Mombasa, from uh, where we plant our great Sukuma wiki to the coast. This, this is the, tra the track, right price point. Mm -hmm. And again, the, our customers are growing economically, so, so they are able to uh, uh, scale up uh, to slightly more expensive track that can carry uh, sizable, sizable goods. So really, uh, our product is 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 mainly the FR90, but we are in each and every segment. Talk to us about investment. Obviously, this has cost money investing in in capacity. Talk to us about what investment has gone into capacity over the last few years. So, in the last two three years or so, we we have been in investing. As as I mentioned, that uh, uh, Isuzu coming in one of uh, the. Uh, input uh, is, is, is strengthening our manufacturing capacity uh, because we have faith in the growth of the East African region and therefore we want to invest and be ready to take advantage of all the opportunities that are going to emerge. So one great ex ex expansion was on our electro deposition paint facility. Uh, it is the one of its own in Sub-Sahara Africa. So the e electro deposition paint plant, what it does is that when you bring the vehicle and you assemble, for instance, the cabin of a pickup of a truck, you don't have to spray paint. You know, traditionally you'd spray paint it to, uh, to whatever color. But with this plant, we can dip in our cabin fully, get it out, put it into our oven, it is baked, 
and it's out of the plant goes and connect with the chassis and out it goes. So that, that is a big investment. Uh, the other investment is uh, our uh, 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 dynamic brake testing. Uh, this is a safety feature uh, to test our, uh, the brakes of our vehicle. Are they up to the highest quality? Uh, we have invested in, in, uh, in uh, water testing equipment. Uh, we have I invested in, in the line. You know, we brought in the pickup truck to Kenya. We invested in, in our line to be able to, uh, to produce the pickup, uh, the pickup truck locally. So about 2 billion shillings. In the next medium term, we are looking at investing another 2 billion shillings in, in plant expansion, in readiness for production of uh, Euro 4 uh, vehicles that we're going to start to produce in, in 20. Uh, we're going to start to sell in 2023 to comply with the government regulation around fuel emissions. So great investments uh, in, in plant expansion and people training as well. Um, obviously then that leads to manufacturing capacity and for those who are interested in figures, how many vehicles did we manufacture last year for example? So in a, a last year was, was a difficult year because it was a COVID year so we produced about 4,300 trucks uh, in 2019 was relatively good year. Uh, we produced uh, about uh, 5,000 trucks. Uh, our, our capacity is to produce about 11,000 vehicles uh, per year. So you can see we are hardly just about 50-60% of our installed capacity. Uh, but we have very high confidence that the market is going to resume and we are going to, to fully utilize uh, our facility. Now obviously those numbers then mean people trust Isuzu. Um, and you, you talk about being a trusted logistics partner for mm -hmm. our customers. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for, for that customer? Um, we, we design and, and, and produce some of the best diesel engines we have in the world. So Isuzu is, is, is a trusted brand. Uh, but we want to stretch our business a little further and uh, to work more closely with our customers to be a partner in logistics, uh, to be able to support them, focus on their core business, and let us do what we can do best, uh, offering great products and offering outstanding uh, after-sales support. And I can only talk about this by giving an example. Yes. Allow me to use an example to, to educate Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, our viewers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you buy a newspaper? Yes, I do. What time do you read your newspaper? Um, sometimes early morning. Early morning. Yes. So, we have our two main uh, newspaper uh, companies, the Nation and the Standard Newspaper. Uh, they used to run their fleets, uh, Isuzu fleet, in their facilities and they uh, had to go and buy spare parts at Kirinyaga Road, come and maintain the vehicle. They had a whole team that is doing their after sales support, working late at night uh, to get the, the vehicles going to distribute a newspaper to the farthest corners of our country. It was not their core business. Their core business is to get stories and publish great stories so we can read. So we worked with them to say, look here, you don't have to run an after sales operation. We can take that away from you. We can manage your fleet. And at 11 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, it will be at the Nation Distribution Center or Standard Distribution Center to pick the newspaper and ship it across the country. They trusted us. And we have done an outstanding job. Today, when you go to the Nation uh, Center here on Mombasa Road, there is no after sales service. All the vehicles are brought to Isuzu East Africa. Uh, uh, like mid morning, when they return, they drop them here. We work on them, we service them. They go to the Nation Center, they load the newspaper, and off uh, they go to market. Outstanding partnership that, that, that we, we have done with our most perishable item. Because I believe after 10, 11 o'clock, no one is interested in lead, reading the newspaper. They've already done the reading. So those are some of the solutions we are working with our customers. Let us take away the burden that is non-core, that is core to us, and work with them to, to, to really 
uh, support them to continue to do their business. So that is the, the, the logistics partner we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, um, pengine kwa wale wanasikiza kiswahili tu, tu switch kidogo kwa kiswahili. <laughs> um, mteja akija akinunua gari, amenunua lori, amenunua pickup, amenunua eh, gari ya kazi. Akisha nunua na akienda, sasa mna malizana hapo ama unamfuatilia katika maisha ya hiyo eh, gari? Ha, sisi ya tumalizana gina customers. Our value is earning customer for life. Mm -hmm. Akisha kuja mteja kwetu kununua gari, hatu muachi. Tutakuwa pamoja nae. Lengo letu kubwa si kuuza gari peke yake. Kuuza gari ni vizuri lakini tunaangalia mbali so kuona mbali kwanza mteja anayenunua gari ametumia pesa nyingi sana kununua gari na ni vigumu kwetu kumwacha peke yake tunataka kutembea na yeye katika safari yake anapotumia ili gari tuweze kumsaidia kununua gari la kwanza na la pili Uhusiano ni kitu muhimu kwa biashara. Nimekuja kugundua. Ukiwa na wateja, ukiwa na uhusiano mzuri nao. Watanunua gari la kwanza, watanunua la pili, wataleta marafiki zao, watakuja kununua magari. Mara nyingi naitwa na mteja nilimuuzia gari miaka kumi, miaka ishirini iliyopita. Bado uko? Nambia nipo na kutumia mteja especially wakati mgumu kama wakati wa covid uhusiano mzuri na customer ni kitu cha muhimu sana jambo la pili ni katika kutunza lile gari mm. lile ili liweze kumpa eh, service huyo mteja mm. mnashirikiana mna kivipi na, na wateja ili eh, gari li, lisichakae kabisa baada muda mfupi gharama kubwa ya mteja si kununua gari Gharama kubwa ya mteja ni ku maintain hilo gari. So tunawaambia wateja wetu kwamba kwanza tunawaelimisha juu ya utumizi mzuri wa vipuri vya magari. Tuko na parts aina tofauti, tuko na mara tatu. Uh, kuna kuna je, eh, Isuzu Genuine ya uh, parts. Sasa tuna, wakati wa warranty ile gari iko katika warranty tunawahimiza wateja wetu kutumia genuine parts sababu ile gari iko na warrant ukiwa na shida fulani watarudisha sisi tutarekebisha ile gari bila gharama yoyote hiyo ni namba ya kwanza then tuko na parts tunaziita base value parts wakati wa warrant unapokwisha uh, lile gari pia limefanya kazi ya kutosha liko katikati linaelekea kuanza kuzeeka tunawaambia tumie ni base value pa parts gharama yake ni chini kidogo kuliko isuzu genuine parts. Alafu kuna parts za kiwango cha chidi kidogo ambazo tunaziita best value parts. Ah na best value parts ni binafu, binafu kabisa. Ah na tumezichagua sisi bado ni parts nzuri lakini sasa zinaweza kutumika kwa mpaka maisha ya mwisho ya ya ilo gari. Na pia engineers wetu au team yetu ya after sales kawaida iliko sambamba hapa na hapa na mteja kuwaeleza jinsi ya ku maintain kupeleka zile gari kwa service na ku make sure kwamba hizo magari zinatumika vizuri kuwaelimisha waendeshaji wa magari ma driver wanachangia pakubwa sana uh, kwa vile gari linavyoweza kudumu so tunawaelimisha ma driver tunawafundisha tuko na drivers academy hapa Isuzu East Africa tunawaleta wa ma driver tunawatrain na kuwarudisha kazi excellent Um, so katika hali ya ku deal na customer and, and that we are talking about customer feedback now mm -hmm. how does that apply to you developing uh, the products that you eventually sell to them how do you work with them so the, the customer is at the center of our product planning uh, that is why building a strong relationship with customers as they use the product is very very important so we have a team our team our after sales team that once the sales people have sold the vehicle our after sales team take over uh, and they support the companies they support the dealers to be able to maintain those those vehicles 
Uh, and then we have a team of field engineers. Uh, the role of the field engineers is to work with the customers, to listen, to understand what is happening, how are the customers using the vehicle, uh, what terrains are these vehicles being used, how far are they traveling, uh, to understand that customer behavior. And when we are now designing, uh, uh, developing the product, we bring them together, we bring the owner, we talk to the conductor, um, we talk to the, to the customers, we talk to the banks, we bring all these stakeholders together and listen to them. Plus the feedback that we get periodically through our uh, maintenance, what, what, what items are failing, what is the rate of failure, which items do we need to strengthen, then that goes to the design. Uh, design center. So engineers in Japan, they, 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 they get all this feedback from the markets and they use that to now design the product that will come to the market. So the customer <coughs> is, is at the center o o of our product uh, development. Excellent. Let's take a few questions, Rita, and there's a question from um, um, somebody who is asking, I dream of owning, this is Mwangi Muraguri, he dreams of owning an Isuzu FRR90, what now you're calling the uh, um, uh, yeah. FTR, uh -huh. how can I go about raising the finances? That's a question. So Muraguri, uh, do not worry about the finances at this point. Come to our facility or go to the nearest dealer near to you. They will be able to explain to you uh, how you uh, you're going to own a truck. And in part of our customer education, we, we ask the customer to come to us so that we can teach them on how to go about getting, uh, getting to purchase a product, either to support you with the, getting the requisite financing to be able to afford, or to even teach you how to save money to be able to, to acquire a vehicle. Many customers have a lot of money, but they don't take you through the banking system so that they can have a banking record. When you go to the bank, you might be charming and great, but the banker is looking at you as a risk. Yeah. So they want to see your financial statements to make sure that your financial statements will be able to pay for the truck. So we educate our customers on saving and getting ready to own a truck. So that is part of the role we play. Please come to any of our facilities and we should be able to help you walk the journey and you will own an FTR 90 with no doubt. There's a question that is related and this is from Martinez Daguada and uh, he's saying address the issue of high purchase prices of locally assembled vehicles versus somebody maybe going to Dubai or Singapore to buy the vehicles. I know that uh, price is usually an issue but there is something behind locally assembled vehicles. So first and foremost, local, local assembled vehicles, you, uh, they are, we don't pay duty uh, because the government has given us that uh, incentive, so we don't pay import duty. Uh, freight, the, this guy to get his vehicle from Dubai has to pay freight, and that vehicle is not new. That vehicle is already eight years old. So the value, the after sales, the availability of parts can be a challenge. Uh, because these are models not suited for our market. So if an individual is looking really to get serious into commercial business and make money, we advise and c encourage them to come and we'll talk to them and we'll be, we'll be able to demonstrate the pros and cons of used vis-a-vis -vis new for business. Um, so for customers who are far away from, say, Nairobi, Mombasa, the main centers, mm -hmm. um, how do they get service, how do they get parts, how do they get assistance um, uh, out there? So we, we uh, several uh, points. We have our three S dealers located in some of the major uh, counties of the, our country. Mm -hmm. uh, and in total, we have about 54 touch points where you can, uh, our customers can access uh, service uh, for our products. Uh, we have uh, partnered with the uh, SMEs and we have uh, parts containers that we call Isuzu Machinani. These are uh, places where you can get quick filters, oil filter, air cleaners and all that for purposes of quick maintenance uh, of the vehicle. We have our mobile 
service uh, truck that also can reach a customer who are outside the uh, the 54 touch points we can reach them using our mobile um, uh, facility we are on call our call center is 24 7 uh, we can be reached for any additional support that might be required we have also isuzu uh, fleet of uh, field engineers that are operating across the country and they are on call and they can be reached so uh, in terms of are points where you can access service we have th those points but we continue to study uh, the urbanization pattern how new markets how new centers are being created and we are continuing to create new uh, service points as a logistics partner we don't want our customers to travel far uh, from their work premises to seek for service so we are continuing to ensure that either we are partnering with local outfits or we are creating our own uh, service centers to give uh, that service to our customers. Um, specifically, talk about the authorized service centers and what they can do for your customer out there. So the authorized service centers are just service centers like our main service center here. They offer a service, so you can take your vehicle there they, they can offer service, they can do warranty jobs because these are authorized by us. They have been trained. It's just like being in any of our uh, our workshops. So you can buy spare parts, you can get service, you can get assistance. Uh, they can reach us if, if the problem is complex and needs uh, minds of many engineers, then they can be able to reach us and we can be able to offer that service. In fact, it's, it's very interesting because other companies that do their own servicing, are looking to tap into our approved service center. So instead of going to approve their own, they come to us and say, okay, Isuzu, what have you done? Who are those service centers that we have uh, you have approved? And they take uh, them as also uh, service points. Oh, good, great. Um, let's, and before I go to the next question, by the way, Eliud Kipchoge, Olympic champion, is watching, and uh, he says he's a real testimony <laughs> of Isuzu uh, D Max and is enjoying the benefits of the Isuzu D Max. So, hi Eliud. <laughs> hi Eliud. Uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> yeah. So, following on the, the the genuine parts, because this is a big pain point uh, mm -hmm. for customers. Um, some say that the genuine parts are expensive, um, but then let's talk about genuine versus counterfeit and what it does to 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 vehicles. So, uh, Isuzu truck is made up of many genuine parts. Uh, and uh, when a customer goes to buy a vehicle, it's not cheap. Our cheapest vehicle is about 3 million shillings. So when a customer buys an expensive vehicle and goes and puts an ungenuine air filter, air cleaner, brake, brake pads, or leaf springs right. is risking because a non-genuine part can cause damage to the product. And when that damage is caused, the customer could pay up to a hundred times yeah. the value of that non-genuine item that they put in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it's caused because our customers do not have uh, the requisite educational understanding. So we are spending quite a bit of uh, time to educate our customer on the value uh, of protecting that hard-earned money that they have invested in the vehicle to ensure that they, they use genuine parts. And as I've mentioned, we have different categories of parts. We have genuine, we have best value, we have Isuzu Select. Those parts have been checked and approved by us as fit to be used in, in the product. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about people now. Mm -hmm. How many people do you have working here? Um, and, and even below that, I know we have uh, women engineers who are working here. But let's start with the people, uh, because employment. So we have about 475 mm -hmm. great employees. <clears throat> about 230 uh, of them, they, they work in the assembly plant. Uh, and the rest of the staff, they work in, in the other function. About 120 of our employees 
are working in our in our service center. Uh, in terms of gender, we are strong on uh, being an equal uh, opportunity employer. We have about 75 female employees uh, and about 22 of them work in the assembly plant. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so let's talk about um, um, technology transfer, skills transfer, training, and, and, and that for employees uh, in relation to um, uh, Japan. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, uh, technical, because uh, Japan provides us with uh, a lot of support, especially technical training, uh, as we have indicated that um, after sales is going to drive the success of our business going forward. We uh, have training. We have our office in Dubai uh, offering us great service training for our service technician. Uh, and uh, we have Japan, we have uh, a program uh, by Isuzu Motors Limited called I1 Grand Prix. Uh, this is a contest, a competition uh, of the best service technicians from all over the world. Uh, they would meet in Tokyo uh, to compete during this um, uh, festival um, uh, competition. And it takes a lot of time to prepare. So like in Kenya, we will have, we will invite all our dealers to nominate, to, to bring their best technicians to compete. So we will compete at, at Kenya level mm -hmm. and pick our very two best uh, service technicians. Then we will go and uh, compete, for instance, uh, for maybe our region. Uh, we will take our team to our office in Dubai and they will do the competition. And the competition is both uh, written and, 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 and practical uh, problem solving. You'll have a, a vehicle that you need to crank it. Uh, there could be some tests to, to, to measure how quick and efficient you can be able to resolve those problems. And it's normally a, a, a fantastic opportunity for us to compete with the rest of the world and to bring the learnings uh, that we get from this competition back here uh, in terms of uh, developing our ability to support our customers. Right, right. Mm. So uh, on people issues, I know uh, we have something called the Isuzu Women's Council mm -hmm. and, and that was uh, started to um, support the women in Isuzu and even beyond. Mm. Um, talk to us about that. Women are uh, uh, just like the male employees are very important in terms of diversity of our organization. And uh, for us to be successful, we need the collective uh, input uh, to our business by both female and male employees. Uh, and uh, the Women Council uh, was started to, 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 to champion uh, the support of, of women employees uh, in area of career growth and career progression, uh, training, and for them to actually be champions uh, of, of, our, of, our, of our product, champion of, champions of our systems and processes, uh, and to really support uh, the company to be able to, uh, to grow. Excellent. And in, in addition to that, the um, community support activities we do. And obviously one of the biggest is our partnership with uh, Eliud mm -hmm. Kipchoge. Um, talk to us about, he's just defended his Olympic uh, <laughs> gold medal. Yeah, and he's online, eh, so maybe it's time we congratulate <laughs> the Eliud for Kipchoge for, for that great win. Yeah. So Eliud is, 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 is one of those uh, uh, happy partnerships that we have had because he always says that uh, Isuzu East Africa gave him another leg. Uh, to help him to grow and we, we are very, very proud uh, of what he has been able to achieve. Uh, we draw from his great resilience, his great discipline, his great, his great durability, he's a durable individual, discipline, good at execution and it just resonates with the Isuzu brand. It's reliable, it's trusted. We trusted he was going to win, right? Yes. <laughs> so Elud is one of those. We have uh, pro programs in education. 
Uh, and our education programs are both internally. Actually, internally we have um, uh, we have uh, MD scholarship, uh, and the MD scholarships uh, supports two uh, uh, employees for our assembly uh, employees up to mid-level managers. We take the two best children through high school education, uh, two best girls and two best boys. Uh, and we have been doing this program uh, forever. We partner with Palm House Foundation to sponsor about eight children uh, from needy communities that require education. We sponsor in the endowment fund uh, of, of uh, Palm House as well to just build the fund to be able to support uh, the children in the future. Our graduate training program is a powerful program. Uh, we get uh, about 12 graduates, top in, in all fields, uh, male and female uh, uh, graduates. We, we, we take them through a one-year comprehensive training to equip them with the skill, with the culture, with the values, with the entrepreneurship to be able to be a great, great uh, employees wherever they'll be employed. Those we can consume, we consume. Those we cannot consume, we also release them to the market, and it has been a very uh, empowering program for us. Right. Um, you also have adopted a forest. You plant uh, trees in several places. Yes. Talk to us about that. So we have adopted uh, a forest, or a hill, really. It's not forested yet. Uh, in, Ma in Machakos County, it's called Mumando. Uh, we plan in the next uh, 10 years to plant over 50,000 trees to uh, completely afforestate that uh, particular hill. We are working with Kenya Forest Services, County Government of Machakos, uh, and our employees to, to, to support in making sure we green uh, that hill. Excellent. Um, let's look at um, a question here. Somebody says, I would like to work for Isuzu, that is Nevada and Jue. I would like to work with Isuzu. How can I apply for internship? <laughs> what are the qualifications? <laughs> so we have uh, several internships uh, program. Uh, I don't know who, what is her qualification, but we have graduate, uh, you know, university internship where you have to go for uh, a field work for a period of three months and get back. We have technical training uh, support, and also we have the graduate uh, training programs. Uh, for the graduate training program, we announce it in the, in the media mm -hmm. and uh, we invite applicants, they apply, they go through uh, the process of uh, evaluation and we pick the very best. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we come to a close and before I let you go, there is uh, a young man somewhere, a young lady watching you and, 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 and looking at what you've done, uh, what you've achieved, what what can you tell them in the journey that you've taken? <laughs> well, the the young lady, the young guy who is watching, uh, I would like to tell them that uh, first they have to take care of themselves. They have first to be healthy uh, and and safe, especially during this difficult time of COVID nineteen. Uh, but to develop mastery, uh, the world is a very, very competitive world. So whatever field, whatever trade, uh, the young lady and the young man are in, they have to master their trade. They have to be good at what they do so that then they can be able to be attractive, whether it comes to employment or just to develop themselves, whether they're in business and all that. Isuzu develops great products. We are cut above. That's why we can enjoy 45% market share. Uh, in their trade, where are they at? How can they elevate that trade? It takes time. I have worked for 25 years. It takes time to develop the bench strength to be able to be productive. I know our young people, they want to make it quickly. They want quickly. Um, yeah. It is true we should change the world quickly, but we should be also be very grounded uh, in terms of developing the right skills to be able to lead or to operate at a, at a higher level. 
when I was growing up, my dad told me, go unto the world and learn to live with people. Uh, because I will not be there to walk with you, but you will walk with others. So as young, um, young people, we, our world is, 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 is up just about relationships. We, get, we learn the skills, we have great skills, we are engineers, we are computer technologists, we are data analysts, we are whatever we are. But we work in a world of relationships. So I like the young people to continue to build strong relationships. Our business has grown uh, purely because of great relationships that we build with our customers, we build with our employees, we build with people we work with and engage in. So creating and building strong relationship is very important. Continuously improve yourself as, as a young person. Keep, keep reading, keep being updated in terms of what is happening. Continue to develop your trade as you continue to master it. And last but not least, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 have so fun, have fun. Have, uh, carefully, responsibly. Responsibly having fun. Uh, yeah. Create a routine. It's important to have a routine. A routine that best suits the individual. Because it, a routine helps us to develop discipline. Uh, in what we do so we can be able to, to focus. Eliud is listening. Eliud always says, and he's a philosopher of my time, he always says, before you sleep, before you go to bed, yes. can you know what you're doing tomorrow? Yes. So I, I, I took that as a lesson from him when I, ha yes. I sat and I had him talk to young people. He said, before you go to bed, Make sure you know what tomorrow looks like for you. What is it that you're going to achieve tomorrow? So I think I'll tell them before they sleep, yeah. the young people, even ourselves, let us know what we're going to do tomorrow because what it does, it helps us to organize our mind to focus on our day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you've, you've, you've reached, uh, you know, very dizzying heights, if I may use that word. Mm -hmm. Um, so what after the career, you know, uh, is something that you, <laughs> you want to do after you, you maybe uh, leave office and go and do other things? What will you be doing? So I always have a vision of uh, me sitting down with young people who are navigating through their career. Uh, it could be they are looking to transition to another job or they, they are looking to scale up or they are looking for promotion to just mentor them, uh, to coach them, really to be a life coach. And I went and I already started studied a little bit uh, about coaching. So I would like to use my experience what I have learned in, in the corporate world and, and in life, to mentor young people, to share with them uh, the, the, the my experiences, to guide them through their careers, and to be of use to, to community. Uh, you know, I was a teacher, so I like yeah. teaching. So yeah. it's just part of the continuation of what yeah. I do every day. Yeah. They say teaching never stops. Exactly. And, and so learning should also never stop. Learning should never stop. Rita, thank you so much. This has been fun. I know we can talk on and on for <laughs> the next <laughs> one now. Um, but we appreciate and we hope uh, we'll have another opportunity uh, sometime in future to even speak about specific uh, topics of interest uh, to our fans, our customers, our business partners. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that has been uh, Rita Kavashe. You've heard it from, uh, from direct from her. We appreciate your time that you've been with us. And uh, we will answer your questions. We'll have Rita answer your questions online. So please don't uh, uh, leave your question. Don't, don't, don't uh, shy away. Leave your question online and we are going to, to answer it. So for your time and for uh, the space that you've given us, um, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>